have in front of me here two different Legion laptops. They actually look kind of similar, but they're quite different. This one here is the 2023 Legion 5 Pro. Uh, this is the AMD model, so not the 5i, just the 5. This is the Legion 7, so this is kind of their flagship model. This one here is kind of their middle range model. The difference is that these are one year apart. So this is this year's model, this is last year's model. There's been a lot of criticisms around this year's 4000 series NVIDIA laptop, specifically because of the price and the marginal gain in performance for that price. In this video, what I wanna do is actually compare the two of them. Considering these are both about the same price, more or less, depending on sales and where you buy them, they're about the same price online. Big question becomes then should you buy this year's model or should you buy last year's model? If you can get this year's model kind of mid-range laptop for the same price as last year's flagship, is there really a benefit to going with last year's model and potentially getting a more premium item? So this year we have the 4060 and the 4070. The 4070 I have right here, which is an increase from the 3070 I had last year. I actually reviewed the last year model of this as well. The 4070 isn't substantially faster than last year's 3070. There are some minor benefits as well. It's gonna perform a little bit better than last year. So the 4070 is a step up from the 3070 last year. However, one of the benefits I found is actually it uses, it achieves that type of performance with slightly lower wattage. So you do get a little bit more efficiency out of this year. However, the raw performance of the laptop in terms of the 3070 versus the 4070 is not huge. And considering last year, you also have access to the 3070 Ti, that may be actually a more compelling option than this year's 4070. Expect this out with a few different options, at least from AMD, you can go with the 70, 645HX, which is a Ryzen 5, or you can go with the 7745HX, which I have right here, a 4050, 4060, all the way up to a 4070. This is the 4070. It appears that there are two different screen options. This one here has the 500 nit screen, but it does look like there's a 300 nit screen. I actually don't see the 500 nit screen on their website, but I assume it's an error because when I bought this model, it came with 500 nits. Legion 7 here also has a few different options too. So in terms of the CPU, right here I have the 6800H, so that's a 6000 series AMD processor. You can also get this with a 6900HX, which is basically the same as the 6800H, but a little bit more powerful and efficient. This is the highest spec model that they have, the 6850MXT, which is a variant of the 6800M. And you can also get it with a 6700M. The 6700M has 10 gigabytes of VRAM. The 6850MXT has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So there is a bump in VRAM there as well as performance. The 7000 series CPUs are quite a bit more powerful than the 6000 series CPUs. However, they also demand a lot more battery. So you're gonna get higher temperatures and lower battery life out of this one, but better performance. You're gonna get slightly less performance out of this, but better battery life and temperatures. In this video, I'm gonna to try to do a complete comprehensive comparison between them. I'm gonna look at the build, the internals, the typing experience, screen, audio. I'm also gonna be looking at performance as well. CPU performance, GPU performance, battery life, cooling, all of this type of thing. The Legion 7 here sits a little bit lower, maybe a few millimeters lower than the Legion 5, you can see there, um, and the actual laptop itself. It's not just the feet, the whole laptop itself that sits a little bit lower. So it's a little bit thinner on the front. So if we look at the front there, it may be hard to see on camera, but it's a little bit thinner, the actual laptop itself. The screen is a little bit thinner, the body's a little bit thinner as well. The actual footprint of the laptops is more or less identical. You can see there, basically the same, no real difference. The backs are similar. Obviously, like I said, the Legion 5 is a little bit thicker, but the actual footprint is very similar. This feels nice. Uh, I think it's a metal material, but it feels pretty nice. Um, you can see there. This here, you know, cheaper plastic here. Um, it's still fine, like it's still a rigid plastic, but definitely lower quality plastic for sure. Big heat vent on the bottom there. Speakers fire off to the side here. Kind of the weaker speakers there which is weird because the sound comes up and that has to go out the side um, but you know it's okay it's a little bit plastic on the bottom there the big speakers here are going to fire directly down so that's really nice same idea big vent there this big single footprint there this one here is a little bit less rubbery it's more like smooth it's still going to you know adhere to things um, but you can see that there if you compare it to this one this one here is like really rubbery it actually has like dust particles on it it's not that it's just that it's worn down on this one it actually is like a little bit more rubbery on this one. This one ha here does have more plastic, the Legion 5. So this here, this little like piece that goes around, it is a huge improvement from last year. I'm gonna tell you that. Last year I did not like that kind of butt on the back of it. You know, but this here is plastic, this kind of ring that goes around it, it is a plastic material. You get metal here on that, but you know, some of this is plastic on the back here. Whereas the Legion 7, like I said, it's the premium item, so it's metal. So this is metal, obviously you can see it, that's metal, metal there, all metal, all metal, all metal. So a lot more metal on the Legion 7. They actually weigh a very similar amount. Uh, they're not light laptops by any means. I would say they're actually probably very close in weight, to be honest, despite this having more metal and you know vapor chamber. It's just a slightly thinner laptop. So those heat pipes can be, can be heavy, depending. IO is gonna be considerably different. So you see here, you know, you have headphone, microphone, jack, camera, privacy slider, USB-C there. Here on the Legion 5, you get the same 
I.O. However, instead of getting USB-C, you get a USB-A over there. So that's a bit of a downgrade. Other side, again, here you get two USB-C, so no, no legacy ports on the sides at all. Here you get one USB-C and one legacy port. Whether you like that or not is up to you. Um, but there is a big difference here. This is just a USB-C 10 gigabit. This one here does have, you know, the normal USB-C 10 gigabit, but it also has a USB 4. You do have to upgrade it through BIOS, but once you do upgrade it through BIOS, this is a USB 4, and that's 40 gigabit. So that's going to be basically the same as Thunderbolt 4. So if you are running a dock or an eGPU, uh, that's going to be what you want there. That's, that's a 40 gigabit USB 4. This one here doesn't have any USB-Cs that are faster than 10 gigabit. They're all going to be 10 gigabit. This one, you know, they're 10 gigabit across the board. However, you do have a USB 4, which is pretty considerable. Same design language on the back, you know, a little bit different, but basically the same. So basically the same ports on the back, you know, RJ45, USB-C with power delivery. So it's good if you're going to run an external monitor or something and power your laptop. HDMI, USB-A, USB-A, and this is your proprietary power in. The Legion 7 only has USB-A's here on the back. There's nothing on the sides, so you only get two USB-A's. The Legion 5 has USB-A's on there and both other sides. So you get a lot more USB-A's on this one. However, for USB-C, you get one here, one here, and two here. So you get four USB-C's on the Legion 7. On this one, you only get one here and one on the side. So you only get two here. So you get double the amount of USB-C's here. Here's a look at the internals of the two. This is the Legion 7, this is the Legion 5. So the first thing we'll go over is the battery. This has a larger battery, 99 watt hour. It does come with a lower option as well. This one here has a smaller battery. It's only gonna be 78 watt hour. So there is a bit of a difference there in terms of the battery size as well. Speakers on the Legion 7 are quite a bit bigger, you can see there, than the Legion 5. So that's one of the premium features. You get better sound on these as well. In terms of upgradability, it's basically the same. Your first primary NVMe is here, primary NVMe is here, both upgradable. Wi-Fi chip, Wi-Fi chip, both upgradable. Second NVMe slot here, second NVMe slot here. So really you're gonna get the same there overall. Both of them have upgradable RAM. You have two SODIMM sticks there, DDR5 in both cases. This one here supports 4800 megahertz RAM, which is in here. This one here supports 5200 megahertz RAM. They actually ship with 5600 megahertz, but it's only clocked to 52. So 400 megahertz difference there on the RAM. Probably not gonna make a huge difference, um, especially because this one here has a 6000 series iGPU, the 680M. This one here has the 7000 series, which is just a 610M. So substantially better iGPU on this. Enough that you can actually do light gaming. You're not gonna be doing any gaming on the GPU of the iGPU of this one here. Cooling system is obviously different. The Legion 7s use a vapor chamber, so you're gonna get really, really good cooling. The CPUs are a little bit cooler for, to start with, and you get a vapor chamber, so you're gonna get really good cooling out of this system here on the CPU. The 7000 series Dragon Range actually run pretty warm, same with the 13th gen Intel. So they run pretty warm. So you're gonna get higher temperatures considering this is just a heat pipe method there, and the chips themselves are hotter. The GPUs, the NVIDIA GPUs are actually really cool for 4000 series. I don't find them to be overly hot and they're quite efficient. So this heat pipe here, this setup here should be totally fine for the GPU in there. I haven't found any high temperatures, even with the highest 4070 on this model here. This one here has a 6850M from AMD, which is a much warmer GPU. It's going to have higher temperatures. However, because it has this vapor chamber here and the CPU is not as hot, I don't find that this one gets hot at all. It actually runs quite cool. Um, GPU and CPU. This one here, the GPU runs cool, but the CPU runs pretty, pretty hot. So here's a look at the laptops when they're open. The Legion 5 this year has a lot more design inspiration taken from the Legion 7, which I like. The Legion 7 looks nicer. Um, and the Legion 5 this year looks better than last year. It the keyboards look different. This one here has a lighter gray. This one here has a darker kind of almost, almost black color. Um, they actually feel a little bit different. This one has a little bit of a more texture to it. It's not rubbery, but it's just a little bit more texture. These are a little bit more smooth and they have a different sound. So the actual typing experience is very similar on both. Um, I like both of them. They both feel basically the same. Um, not really a big difference. They both sound a little bit, they sound very similar. Could be this has a thicker body. So it would just come down to preference. I don't actually prefer one or the other more than the other. I don't really care. Trackpads feel a little bit different. They're both quite large. You can see here they both have quite large trackpads, uh, and the positioning of them is the same. This one here is very smooth. It's not worn down or anything. It's just an extremely smooth trackpad, glass trackpad. This one here is plastic, but superb plastic trackpad. Um, if I were to pick between the two of them, it wouldn't really matter. I'd say they're both the same in terms of accuracy. This one maybe is a little bit smoother, I guess. Like nine point, this is like a 10 out of 10. This is like a 9.5 out of 10. They both have RGB keyboards. You can light them up and do all the fancy stuff with that using X-Ray. You can set up color profiles. I don't like RGB, so I typically just turn it off. But you know, if you really like it, you know, just function key. Now there's that. I don't know what this one's gonna default to. 
nothing. I might have just turned it off on all of them. Oh, there we go, it was just turned off. So you can see there. Uh, there is some underbody RGB on the Legion 7 here. This, I don't, this is just pre-configured. I don't use any of it, but you know, RGB here, you can see it's going off, but there's no underbody RGB. This one does have this RGB ring around it, so you can get RGB there. Um, yeah, I mean, if you really care about RGB, this is obviously more interesting. You can see there it's got this RGB, different profiles. You turn it up, turn it down in terms of the brightness. Uh, this one here, you can't turn up and down in terms of brightness. So if I hold my function key and do that, it doesn't do anything. You can turn it on and off and you'll go like those different options there, but you can't turn it up and down. This one here, you can make it brighter, three different settings there. And you have different, like I said, you have different profiles. You can configure all these in Windows. I haven't done it. So very, very similar screens. Um, So Legion 7, Legion 5. They have high refresh rate screens, which is good. Colors are really nice. Darts are pretty good for an IPS panel. I don't notice a lot of bleed on either of them, so identical. I can't really tell any difference. Like, if somebody were to threaten me with my life and tell me which one was which, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So, um, Basically, really good screens on both of them. So just does that not really a consideration. However, I would not go with the 300 nit version of this. Um, even if it has good brightness, even if it has good colors, 300 nit screens can be a problem. They can be pretty gross when you actually use them on a daily basis. So I recommend going with the higher resolution. I recommend going with the higher brightness screen. And turn it up. Eighty five. It's around ninety. And uh, 17098 single core. I don't know. Here's the Cinebench scores for the 6800H and the Legion 7. Here's our Time Spice score. This is not extreme, just the regular one. 12622 GPU. CPU. And here's the Time Spice scores for the Legion 7. Won't necessarily translate to gaming performance, but uh, Fire Strike Extreme. Obviously, same system down there. Oh, it's legendary. And here's our Fire Strike score. See there, system. Now we'll explore some of my game test results. You can see here on the Legion 5, the average was a little bit higher. That could just be where I was going in the scene. However, 1% lows are a little bit lower. However, the 0.1% lows are much lower. So you can see there the difference between the 0.1% lows are fairly considerable. MSAA at eight times, you can see the same type of trend here where we have pretty good results here. So 85 versus 71 average. 73 versus 59, not terribly different. However, the 0.1% lows are considerably different in Forza Horizon 5. So 64 frames per second there, and 15 is the low here. And this is because we exceeded VRAM here. 6850 MXT is entirely viable at 4K. The 
RX 4070 is not because again we're hitting those huge lows there. Even with the MSAA at 8 time, the AMD GPU performed pretty well. The RX 4070 just ran terribly, um, really, really, really bad, um, like 15 FPS or something like that. So uh, Hogwarts Legacy, they ran actually kind of similar in Hogwarts Legacy. So you can see here, I didn't even do 4K because it wasn't viable. The 1% lows are a lot better, uh, almost double, 44 versus 25. The 0.1% lows, the stutter basically I call them, is bad in both cases. Cyberpunk 2077 was much more even. I didn't actually apparently test that on high, but you can see here it's almost identical across the board. Uh, if we come down here, look at Spider-Man Remastered, uh, there were some very strange results here. So the AMD machine performed very well at uh, very high with 16 times anti-aliasing. The Nvidia machine got actually better average overall. However, the lows were quite bad. Red Dead Redemption, same idea. The Nvidia machine did much worse than the AMD. AMD machine had, you know, those averages at 78, not way higher than the RTX machine. Once again, the lows are really bad on the 4070. So you can see here 33 and 24 versus 66 and 60. So this is a rock solid experience on the AMD machine. And the NVIDIA machine just has really bad lows. Far Cry 6, I did HD texture pack. Um, this one was a lot more equal. So you can see here um, with re ray tracing off on uh, max presets slightly higher average I would say on the AMD machine but you know they're pretty similar across the board if you turn on ray tracing here so this is with ray tracing on max presets however I did have ultra quality FSR you can see here that the AMD machine did considerably better even with ray tracing so the average is similar between the two however these lows here are really bad when we went up to 4k it ran quite well same settings there it ran fine on the AMD machine uh, the 4070 just didn't work. It was just way too much VRAM. It just wasn't capable of doing it. The Last of Us Part 1, you can see here on Ultra, I, I gave it an NA rating. It, it was just terrible at 1440p on Ultra. It just really wasn't playable. Uh, way too much VRAM. We were way over the 8 gigabytes on that setting there. So, you know, it ran fine on the AMD machine, you can see here. Uh, if you turn down the settings to high and then turn on some FSR or DLSS to performance, uh, then the AMD machine and the NVIDIA machine are both able to play. Again, weirdly, the average was higher on the NVIDIA machine. However, the 0.1% those were much worse there. Uh, still playable, though. I was able to play at 4K on the AMD machine. So you can see here, I, you know, I put it on 4K, again, with performance FSR. Once again, the, AMD, the NVIDIA machine just couldn't play because it was too much VRAM. God of War was a little bit more evenly matched again. Uh, so, you know, you can see here that the highs are very similar between the two. At original, at 1440p, the 1% lows are good on both. However, again, you do see the 0.1% lows a little bit lower on the 4070, so 71 versus 55. At 4K, same idea. Playable in both cases. Similar performance. Slightly lower lows there on the NVIDIA machine. So the last game here is Witcher 3. So you can see here that actually this is the one game where NVIDIA did better overall. So you can see that the average is higher at 1440p Ultra. The 1% lows are slightly higher. The 0.1% lows are, well, they're basically the same. Uh, and if you throw on ray tracing, uh, FSR DLSS balanced, uh, again, more playable on the NVIDIA machines. So other than The Witcher 3, which ran better on the NVIDIA machine, all other games either ran equal on the AMD machine or in most cases better or significantly better on the AMD machine. Uh, and a lot of times when you turn the settings up to you know 4K or just higher 1440p settings, the NVIDIA machine was just incapable of keeping up. So clearly you can see here that when it comes to just raw gaming performance, the Legion 7 from 2022 with the 6850 MXT is the clear winner in terms of gaming, at least in these nine games that I tested here.